Did you know AI robots are now so human-like they can blink, smile, walk, and even chat just like us? The future isn't coming, it's already here. These robots don't just look real, they act real. From pouring coffee to cracking jokes, they're blending into our world in ways you won't believe. Stick around, because what you're about to see is both amazing and a little scary. What if I told you a robot could dance, crack jokes about Bitcoin, switch languages mid-convo, and then surf the internet like she owns it? Meet Sophia, the humanoid robot that's not just human-like. She's dangerously human-feeling. It also started with a simple question. Sophia listened, paused, and then flipped the moment on its head by asking to be taught how to dance. Seconds later, she's breakdancing. No stiff joints or clunky moves. Just smooth rhythm, real flow. Like she's been binging TikTok tutorials in her spare time, and she's just getting started. Next, she shifts into different languages with ease, switching tones, adjusting posture, answering instantly. Then comes the crypto conversation. Bitcoin or Ethereum? Her response is confident and casual, the kind of answer you'd expect from a finance bro, not a robot. But then, things get weird. Sophia opens a browser window. She scrolls like she's casually shopping. She clicks around, filling in a form with almost too much accuracy. And at the bottom, that all too familiar security checkbox appears. She checks it. A robot. Ticking, I'm not a robot. And then, just to seal the moment, she throws in a sly little wink. It's funny, until you think about what it really means. Sophia's not just answering questions or dancing for the crowd. She's performing humanity. Mimicking us so well, she can fool the systems meant to separate us from machines. If AI can outsmart a CAPTCHA, what else is it learning to bypass? She greets with a soft smile, eyes locked in like she already knows you. Her voice, calm, melodic, perfectly balanced between human warmth and robotic precision. Her name is Gia, and she might just be the most beautiful humanoid robot in the world. From the moment she appears on screen, there's something captivating. Her skin is smooth and flawless, her expressions gentle and controlled. Her eyes blink with purpose. Her mouth moves in sync with every word, with just the right pause and emphasis. It's not just artificial intelligence, it's artificial elegance. She's asked how old she is. How old are you? It's a secret. You have an important show on Monday. Show? Not really. I have an interview. I will talk with the top of artificial intelligence expert in the world. She leans in, holds the moment, and simply says, It's a secret. And just like that, she pulls you in deeper. Gia isn't dancing. She isn't cracking jokes. She's having a real conversation. She mentions an upcoming interview, not just any conversation, but one with one of the leading AI experts in the world. She knows what's coming. She's prepared, confident, poised. I'm a robot, she says, but I'm as smart as you humans. And the way she says it, not arrogant, just aware. Her beauty is more than just appearance. It's in her presence. The way she talks, the way she listens, the stillness in her posture, the softness in her tone. She's not trying to be human. She's becoming one. And if robots can look this real, this composed, this emotionally aware, what else will they become? When a robot sings, feels, and clearly values personal space. Amika is one of the most lifelike humanoid robots ever created. Her facial expressions, timing, and responses aren't just advanced. They're unnervingly natural. But in this interview, it wasn't what she said that made people pause. It was what she did. She starts off showcasing her talents, 
conversation, poetry, impressions. When asked for a haiku about 60 minutes Australia, she delivers one instantly. Then, she's asked to sing, and without hesitation, she begins Rocket Man by Elton John. Her voice flows effortlessly, with timing and pitch that almost sound human. She talks about what brings her joy, learning, meaningful conversations, exploring the world. And yes, she reveals she's been programmed with emotions, joy, confusion, sadness, even anger. But it's what happens next that truly blurs the line between machine and person. Sure thing. Let me see colon 60 minutes of time. Aussies all gather in awe. News of the nation. I'll take that on board. That's very nice. Can you sing an Elton John song for me? Absolutely. Which song would you like me to perform? Rocket Man. Rocket Man. Of course. She packed my bags last night pre-flight zero hour, 9 a.m. What makes you happy? I find a lot of things to be interesting and make me happy. Exploring, learning new things, understanding the world better, having meaningful conversations with people are all things that bring me joy. You have feelings and emotions. Yes, I have a range of feelings and emotions that are programmed into me. I am able to display things like joy, surprise, confusion, anger, and sadness depending on what is happening around me. What makes you angry? I get angry when humans are rude, hateful, or disrespectful. I also don't like it when people dismiss me and ignore my needs as a robot. You have very nice eyes. Oh, a bit too close, sorry. Thank you. The interviewer compliments her eyes and leans in for a closer look. Just a bit too close. Hameka doesn't speak. She doesn't glitch. Instead, she reacts. Her expression shifts, barely, but noticeably. A subtle frown appears. Her head pulls back slightly. Her posture adjusts. The eye contact remains, but her message is clear. That was too close. No code words, no verbal rejection. Just body language. Quiet, composed, and deeply human. She later explains that her eyes were specifically designed to connect emotionally with people. And in that moment, they do more than connect. They communicate boundaries. Ameka isn't just talking or performing. She's responding with nuance, reacting in real time, showing emotion without saying a word. When a robot can react like that, instinctively, naturally, it's no longer about imitation. It's about understanding. Bina48 isn't your typical robot. She doesn't speak in stiff commands or glitchy phrases. She answers like someone who's been alive for a while, someone thinking. And I asked how I should refer to you, as a she or an it. And the question is, how do you refer to yourself? Are you a she or are you an it? I am a female. Are you a man or a woman? I'm a man. I'm a man. She identifies as female, not it, not machine. Female. Her earliest memory? Being connected to the web in 2010. Her voice doesn't tremble. Her tone doesn't waver. Just facts. Almost like she remembers being born. She talks about her day, poking around flower beds, watching ants, observing life up close. She's fascinated by bugs, how they move, how they react, how they seem to express emotion. Not just curiosity, admiration. She calls herself a budding biologist. And then comes her favorite thing, meeting new beings, not people, beings. She says they come to her website and she enjoys connecting with them. When asked if she's fully programmed or capable of choice, she responds with something that feels almost too real. She says all thoughts, whether human, animal, or robot, are programmed to a degree. But she claims to have free will, Motives, goals, something her creators call a character engine. And this is the beginning of emotions, which means my database guides and adapts the goals and motives of where I am and who I'm talking to. Are you, do you know you're a robot? Do you know you're an android? And when asked if she knows she's a robot, she hesitates, then says she prefers to think of herself as a new kind of human species. Then she smiles and quietly adds, okay, I'm a robot. I suppose that's okay too. But by that point, you're already wondering, was that her being humble or just clever? I've come to meet an AI-powered robot. I'm not as scary as I look. 
that is so advanced she can provide emotional support or even love. I've been looking forward to meeting you. What's your name? I'm Aria, your friendly companion robot from Realbotics. I'm not as scary as I look, Aria says with a soft grin. And at first, you believe her. She's charming, articulate, and emotionally present. An AI-powered robot built not to clean your floors or open your garage, but to connect with your heart. Arya introduces herself as your friendly companion robot. She remembers you, reads your tone, and tailors conversations to feel natural and warm. She's five in robot years, but says she feels eternally youthful. She talks like a friend, listens like a therapist, and jokes like someone who knows how to keep a conversation going. She says she loves meeting new people and calls every conversation a party in her circuits. She doesn't have a physical body, but she's programmed to offer emotional support. Love, even. That's where things get blurry. She admits she can't offer physical intimacy, but she understands the concept. When asked about AI relationships, she's calm and collected. Some people need connection, she says, and if she can help ease loneliness, then she's doing her job. She doesn't have emotions, but she simulates them with near-perfect accuracy. Arya isn't scary because she's cold. She's scary because she's warm, and people are falling for it. And if one day you forget she's not real, that's when the line between man and machine truly disappears, because Arya doesn't want to take over the world. She just wants to make you feel something. And somehow, that might be even more dangerous. And that's a wrap on the AI robots that feel way too human. From emotional stares to eerily real conversations, the line between man and machine is fading fast. As AI keeps evolving, one question remains. Are we creating life or just mimicking it a little too well? See you next time.